you introduce you. All right. Those people are all in so much trouble, by the way. So thank you for coming. I'm glad you all are here. Uh, this is the third session of Capstone Presentations here in Fuller Hall. If I could have your attention, please. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned this morning, this is a moment when um, your colleagues in the senior class uh, are showing their, their best side. They are shining. We are helping them to do that. Um, we want to make sure that the proper amount of uh, respect um, is, is offered to them in these moments. This is not easy to get up here and present uh, to you. They've done a lot of work and a lot of deliberation. Um, so I ask you to please honor that and appreciate that um, with decorum. Please put your phones away if you have your phone. Um, we had a rain of phones falling on the floor in one of our sessions. Your phone should not be in a place where it's going to fall on the floor. Um, please, it's dark in here, it's warm, it's the last session of the day. Um, but please recognize uh, that your colleagues have done so much work to be here um, and they are uh, uh, they're showing their, their work from the semester um, and it's, it deserves your respect and attention. So please do pay attention. Um, the presenters will have 15 minutes, and then we have five minutes of question and answer. Um, and what I'll do for the presenters is I will hold up a five-minute warning. The yellow is the five-minute warning, um, and the pink is a two-minute warning. I will be sitting right over here, so if you can make sure to watch over there um, for those warnings. Um, but glad you're here, Harry. Uh, please take it away. Thank you. So, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Harry Gang, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the significance of youth sports in Caledonia County. So, some of you may know me, and some of you may not. But for those that don't, I want to give you guys a little background about myself. I was born and raised in Nantucket, Massachusetts, and I found love in sports. Nantucket, if you know it, can seem like a glamorous place with nice beaches, fancy restaurants, and a vacation spot everybody wants to go. But inside, but in those months outside of summer, this is not the case. So for us local children, we had to find other things to do. And for most of us, that involves sports. I was given many opportunities to play sports, and these sports really gave me an outlet and showed me a path that I've been on until now. From meeting new people to learning about new skills that I would take with me as I got older. I grew up playing multiple sports, and each one brought a new skill. I was able to see myself continue to grow in these sports and see benefits firsthand. Seeing these skills, I gained, I gained uh, a sense of joy and pride and a feeling that, to this day, has never gone away. So some of these opportunities I was given as a young adolescent uh, were sports year-round and multiple sports at that. I was enrolled in a youth center called the Nantucket Boys and Girls Club, which housed a safe place for me to go and it offered me all the sports I could imagine, from soccer and basketball to football and boxing. We were taught the game by qualified and determined coaches. Being able to be taught sports at such a young age can be difficult, but with the right training, it can benefit the youth enormously. A sport I really found love for was basketball, and it seemed like I was able to get all the resources I needed to build myself into a higher level player. I was able to train through all seasons, travel on a team to play in Cape Cod, and get gym time all season long, and still play other sports at the same time. So starting, starting off my research, um, I hit a few roadblocks. Uh, originally, um, my plan was to do the benefits of a youth center in Caledonia County, but with lack of resources, I decided to go another route. So I wanted to interview someone who really showed me the ropes and was a personal mentor of mine and many others in Nantucket, Delroy Lawrence Jr. He was not only one of the best basketball players on the island, but also one of the best lacrosse players and played for the national Jamaican lacrosse team. He was engaged in both basketball and lacrosse, in the, in the basketball and lacrosse world. He runs orga an organization called Act Hoops, which holds youth camps, clinics, trainings, seminars, leagues, and is well known all over the island. 
He has seen and built up many high-level players, including myself, and has played a major role in youth sports in the Nantucket community. Delroy Lawrence said, after being asked what are the benefits of sports on the youth, it promotes a healthy, active lifestyle since you're promoting physical activity at such a young age. Plus, the more kids are engaged in sports, the less they are engaged in other unhealthy activities. And then it also creates leadership opportunities. This quote shows the importance of youth sports and developmental skills throughout younger children and the importance on the community as a whole, something that everybody knows our high school embodies really well. But the younger grade schools, it is not seen or promoted as much. So the next person I wanted to interview was my coach, Patrick Rainville, who was brought up in Caledonia County and has seen every level of, high school, of basketball from high school to college to even working in the NBA and coaching us here at the academy. He has seen every angle from being a player to being a coach. And he said that the biggest benefits he has seen is opportunities for the, de for the development and physical literacy and teamwork. This means that children are gaining lifelong skills from sports in order to be a healthy, mobile human being from a physical aspect. Teamwork is a skill that incorporates values that are extremely important and children can also use the rest of their lives. Coach Rainville is continuing to expand and grow the sports community in Caledonia County. And if there are any questions on how you can get involved, I'm sure he would be open to talking as he is also our assistant athletic director. So moving on from that, Mental health is a very touchy subject and an issue that cannot be solved simply. It is also a major issue and epidemic in the state of Vermont, with Vermont ranking the third highest, in the third highest depression rate in the U.S. 60% of all suicide cases in the U.S. involve depression, according to the CDC. In a test done by Very Well Mind, they state, participation in team sports was associated with 10% lower anxious and depressed scores and 19% lower withdrawn and depressed scores than non-participation in any sports. Now, I'm not saying that the answer to all mental health problems, that this is the answer to all mental health problems, but it could be the tip of the iceberg. On top of this, Vermont also ranked the highest in New England for childhood obesity. More than 15% of children aged 10 to 17 are obese, according to data from the state of childhood obesity, with physical, phys with physical activity in active adolescence, these rates would have the opportunity of falling down tremendously and bringing Vermont to a healthy standard. So the next thing I want to go over is, um, does Caledonia County produce collegiate athletes? So Caledonia County falls short on the median household income, which shows the financial stability of some can impact the athletes that are being produced, as well as how they are being taught the sport. Without proper funding in our county, a possible reason for less scholarship produced players could be that because of financial stress, we cannot afford to invest in sports. POS1 says, the reinforcing value of possible future benefits of sport participation, like securing an athletic scholarship, may also vary by a family's socioeconomic status. With Caledonia County falling short on the median, household income, the socioeconomic status of many residents is altered, meaning less opportunities for some youth to even play sports, let alone eventually earn an athletic scholarship. Again, a study done by Discourse and Society on the developmental skills that are affected by youth sports like socialization, cooperation, discipline, and dedication. This study, this study done that shows, this was a study done that shows the impact of sport, sports on the younger generation and its effects on behavior and academics. The study states, studies show that these activities are positively associated with reduced delinquent behavior and increased academic and social performance. It also states, parents report in interviews and surveys show that the parents view extracurricular sports activities as an arena for socializing their children to important values and skills. This, these skills can be recognized and as the developmental skills that are important to the younger generation to become proactive members in society. Living in a rural area, socialization can be hard and youth sports can offer a way for children to socialize outside um, outside the academic setting 
as well as meet new people from other towns in the area that, in towns and areas, meet new people in other towns. In areas without sports, they might not ever have the chance of meeting. Those benefits are nice because we are in a rural area and the resources are also cut and children might not be learning sports in a proper way. Coach Rainville says that the biggest problem with youth sports in Caledonia County is a winning at all cost mentality rather than a developmental focus. A lack of professional development opportunities for youth coaches to improve instruction. This can come from sadly inadequate coaching and training systems. The sports being offered is doing a poor, are doing a poor job of teaching children the proper way to play the sport and learn necessary skills and sports that sports can offer if taught properly. As many of you know, we are also in the, pro in the process of an official shortage in Vermont, which means the officials may not be able to perform and officiate at the level which is needed to help the benefits of youth sports be attainable. So, Moving on from, inf from the information and research, because I know after a while it begins to sound artificial and uninteresting, so I want to explain to you guys the process in which I got to this topic and what my outcome will be. In this section, we'll go over these three main questions. So the reason for choosing my specific outcome project was to, for starters, to choose something that I had a deep connection to <clears throat> and would mean something to me on a personal level. Secondly, I wanted to help sports in Caledonia County, help make sports in Caledonia County better and help to teach those developmental skills and show the importance of these skills as children get older. Finally, of course, I wanted to make my outcome translate to my research and back up the things I was saying, primarily about the developmental skills incorporated in youth sports. Over, the overall purpose of my outcome is simple. I want to spread awareness and show people that Caledonia County can produce high level athletes, as well as teach children extremely valuable life lessons through the art of sports. My hope is that people will continue to learn to, to better benefit the sports offered to children and continue to take initiatives to teach children, <coughs> children sports the proper way, even after my capstone is over. I want to be able to change people's perspectives on the impact of youth sports in our county. I would also love to see other people's perspectives and have others enlighten me on their experiences from sports. Finally, I want to make a difference, even if it is a small difference, but every little bit counts. So my official outcome will be a team, a youth team basketball clinic. The clinic will put these young athletes through team building drills and games that help build and promote the proper values of youth sports. The benefits of the clinic will be greater, will be greater than just the youth and it will have insight obviously to the parents and the rest of the community that is involved in youth sports activities. Although this is only a basketball clinic, I believe that I believe that plans to expand in other sports would also be extremely beneficial for future events. My plan is to have four to six of the St. Johnsbury Academy basketball team and members come with me as well as Coach Patrick Rainville to hold this youth clinic. My teammates have all seen the benefits firsthand as well and are willing and eager to show the younger generations the lifelong skills that we were, be able, we were able to learn through sports. Thank you. Which is available upon request. Thank you, Harry. Questions for Harry? You said that you and your teammates would go down and help coach the players, but how many times a week would you guys do that? Um, well, right now we haven't got the full logistics, but we plan to have it just be an event, like a one-time event, um, but that doesn't mean that in the future we can't possibly hold more.
Uh, uh, loud. Um, so I'm, I loved doing sports, but I also have asthma. Uh -huh. Are, do you like have any ways you could think of helping like young kids like that? Yeah, I mean, um, there's obviously ways to work around that. I don't know if you use an inhaler or something, but you can talk to your doctor. They usually help. I have an inhaler. I mm -hmm. just kept getting told, oh, you stop breathing. Just yeah. stop. Um, there's other physical activities that might not involve as much cardiovascular endurance, but um, there's a lot of different sports, and I think other than sports where you're running, they can still be beneficial in the same type of way. This is Morris. Harry, were you able to find any information about other rural areas and how they might be addressing some of the problems that you presented that we're facing with um, uh, coaches and qualifications, things like that? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, Vermont as a state has a lot of rural counties, right? So, um, and Vermont as a state is also going through that official shortage right now. Uh, but other than that, I haven't really found any other information, but I definitely will look into it. How have youth sports helped you become who you are today? Um, youth sports have really taught me a lot of skills, lifelong skills that um, I've been able to take through my whole life, like cooperation, dedication, <clears throat> and other lifelong skills. Hi, Harry. Ooh, hello. Uh, thanks for your presentation. So are there similar clinics in either the county or surrounding counties that are doing a similar thing? How would this clinic compare, et cetera? Could you repeat that one more time real quick? Oh, yeah. Um, so are there similar clinics to what you are proposing either in the state, in sort of surrounding counties? Um, did you look into that at all? Yeah. Um, so I think I took a lot of inspiration from Delroy Lawrence who, like I said, was, is one of my mentors. Um, he holds a lot of clinics uh, down in Nantucket and uh, in Massachusetts and other states with a, a little more of an urban and bigger population. They hold those types of clinics all the time. Um, but I think it would be very beneficial for one to be held here. Hi, Harry. Good job. I'm about ready to start coaching third and fourth grade girls basketball in a couple weeks. What would you say are two to three of the most important things for me to keep in mind as a coach as I work with these young children? Mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing would definitely be you want to teach developmental skills, like things they'll be able to take with them, cooperation, team building skills, um, and a range of skills from teamwork, sportsmanship, things that they can take with them into other worlds outside of basketball, you know? And um, like my coach said, winning a win first mentality, obviously, you know, as you get older, you wanna win. That's like the main thing with sports, you know, it's a win or lose game, but uh, as you're younger, those developmental skills are almost more important than that because you're not gonna remember when you're five years old and you just lost a basketball game, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Someone down right front here, Riley. Mrs. Keach. So I just have a couple of questions, actually. Did you, in your research, look into the effects of COVID on participation in youth sports? Um, no, I didn't end up looking at that, but I definitely should have. Um, and did you also end up contacting the rec department locally here to find out statistics as well in terms of engagement? Yeah, so I talked to... Um, Jason Marks, I believe it is. He, um, he runs the rec department. And um, one of the main concerns, so I tell, so, uh, originally I planned to do my capstone on um, why Caledonia County needs to take the first steps in forming a youth center, right? So um, I had a little bit of a different conversation. I only decided to do this topic about a month and a half ago. But um, we talked a little bit and one of the major lacks is uh, facilities, there's not enough facilities, you know, like there's no set off space for the rec department, right? So like when they have soccer games or they have basketball games, they're renting out facilities, they don't have their own, you know? So 
So I talked to him a little bit about that, and um, we had a good conversation. Okay, that's our time. Thank you, Harry. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks so much.